All right. It is 76 degrees. It's overly warm um, for me. So I'm going to make this a relatively short vlog and probably actually relatively short, unlike the other ones. Um, <sighs> Parlor is back on the App Store now. Uh, they've got all the approvals done. And uh, they have wormed their way back into the Apple Store. Keep in mind, ahead of Fortnite, um, the <laughs> Apple company has, has fucking <laughs> decided in their infinite wisdom that an app used as a government info scraper um, and and <laughs> one that is heavily vulnerable and poorly coded and uh, regularly a risk to the people who use it is uh, somehow less of a threat than a video game. Less. So, um, the window's open, by the way, because, as I said, it is 76 degrees, and it's actually warmer in this room because I have a computer, so you can probably hear the train. I don't know. Point is that uh, <laughs> I thought I'd not only go over some of the stuff involving uh, Parlor, but also the stuff uh, like better alternatives to Twitter and Facebook. Um, so the the article I'll be pulling from uh, is on Vice, and uh, I don't like Vice. You can see uh, many reasons why on on my social media feeds. And I also recently went over the fact that Vice is often hackish um, by, like, omitting things and crafting narratives rather than actually telling a whole story. Um, in an episode of Gingerarchy with uh, Trisha Stewart Mann and Hody Johns, uh, you can see that uh, in a link on both my Twitter and uh, my Facebook right now. I might post it elsewhere as well. But the point is that uh, I'm no fan of Vice, but I'm going to be pulling from this because it was the first reasonable one I found about the issue. So basically, uh, it goes over the fact that Amazon Web Services, Google, and Apple deplatformed them. And that's true, because they're centralized cunts who lied about being alternative uh, while still relying on a mega corporate infrastructure for their fucking hosting. Um, which is why they couldn't even do what uh, every other app that has been kicked off of Google does, which is say, here's our APK. You can still access the app. It's why they had to go down for months. It's why they erased all the parlays before then. Um, it's really fucking laughable. Um, and I laughed a lot. I'm still laughing. Um, because this so-called alternative to big tech fully relied on big tech and then got deplatformed because big tech said nope. So it's funny. It's fucking funny. And I'm tired of pretending, well, I never pretended it's not. So anyway, uh, I thought I'd go over, um, the fact that like, yeah, so they, they got deplatformed, uh, and... <laughs> This person named Don Enby um, basically scraped the entire site. Uh, she archived it uh, using a series of workers in, uh, in her computer. I think maybe there were more than one person involved, but basically 96% of the site, if I remember correctly, was archived entirely. So... Uh, she got to see everything, including the fact that the uh, site did not strip metadata from photos uploaded. So, not only was it a shit WordPress install, which is what made it so easy, but it, uh, <laughs> and, and people hate it when I bring that up. They fucking hate it. But I'm not fucking wrong. And no, I'm not sorry. Um, it's a shit WordPress install, and I know that because... It was already previously compromised because the people who set it up fucking included the uh, the, the login information publicly. Uh, and you can still see it in, in archives. 
they included vital information to the infrastructure of the website publicly. Um, and <laughs> if that doesn't tell you how the rest of the fucking site is, uh, I don't know what to say, man. Like, it's, it's fucking... Anyway, the point is, she scraped the entire site, and, uh... <laughs> She says, everything we grabbed was publicly available on the web. We just made a permanent public snapshot of it. And you can, by the way, see that. Um, <laughs> and the article says, because it's from Vice and Vice are a bunch of feds. Nevertheless, with the FBI, state and local law enforcement, and open source investigators looking for media from Wednesday's attack, the archive could be highly useful to a whole host of people. Um, quote, I hope that it can be used to hold people accountable and to prevent more death, she said. I think people should be allowed to have their own opinion as long as they can act civilized. On Wednesday, we saw what can happen if they don't. Uh, I believe that's in direct referral to the uh, January 6th thing, because uh, this was put out on January 12th. Um, so, uh, basically, Amazon pulls the plug. Um... And, uh, yeah, okay, Donk NB and a few other hackers and researchers managed to capture and archive nearly every post, photo, and video on Parlor before it was shut down. And you can actually just see the, the archive, by the way. It's public. I don't think there's any access requirements. Uh, I, I looked it over, uh, and it was relatively complete. But the point is that, like, it's all there. <laughs> so, basically, um... You can see the entire site still. Um, you just have to not look on the site. Because all, all my parlays are gone. And it's funny because uh, all my parlays were talking shit about Parlor. Um, and it's funny that they're all gone now. As though they wanted to not only erase the positive press, but also the criticism. So that uh, people like fucking... Who 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 is this person over here uh, that I saw? It's it's one of the typicals who says that she's gonna uh, Candace Owens, right? Now that Parlor is back in the App Store, I will be putting my content on Parlor first and using Twitter as a carbon copy thereafter. Disgusted with the big tech collusion that attempted to stomp its platform out because conservatives abandoned this far left app, far left app. If you are trying to get your Parlor app to work, you need to delete it and re-download. Search Parlor app in the store. The new app works much better. And, you know, uh, she's a little bit right because they loosened the uh, terms of service. You can now post porn as long as you use a spoiler. So it's no longer as puritanical. Uh, but <laughs> the fact that people were already being censored for having done things like that... Mm, should tell you everything you need to know about their free speech. Because you can say whatever racial slur you want on there, but you can't post tits. That's illegal. At least according to them. They use really shitty legal precedent to do this, by the way. Um, and I wrote an article on my site uh, about how Trash Parlor is, and I've covered them also, I think, on my YouTube. But, um, yeah, like, <laughs> Parlor is garbage, and, uh, and I went over why uh, over here when I said uh, <laughs> Dan Bongino, when he was trending the other day for having a Fox News show now, is a worthless hack who started a, a fake alternative social media site, shit WordPress install, on mainstream corporate servers, demanded ID for basic functions. This is true. You have to show a driver's license or government-issued ID to post links to <laughs> in comments to um, use DMs. It's 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 a Fed trap. This stuff. I don't have any knowledge of where they're storing your government paperwork, but I don't fucking trust it. And it's not like you know Twitter where it's just for getting the nice shiny little badge and having a little bit more protection from potential fraud. Uh, it's, it's to access basic features, to access features that should be basic to a social network. You have to show your papers. 
if it's not obvious that this site is absolute garbage yet, feel free to continue listening. Uh, left vulnerabilities, which doxed users after a hack, that's what I was talking about just now, and cried when the corporation he relied on pulled out. That's basically it. But I also sort of elaborated today because Parler was trending. Bad WordPress install. Got hacked because of obvious security flaws. Demands ID for basic features. Acts as a government database for opinions and docs. Like I talked about in my Q rant yesterday. Uh, lied about being alternative because it's Amazon. Amazon is not an alternative to big tech. Uh, got kicked off stores because it posed many risks. Actual alternatives exist. Now, you can you can look at, at my posts. I've already proven that Parler is absolute trash. 100%. Um, so I don't feel the need to go into this too much further. But what I will say is this. There are alternatives. And I wanted to mention a few of them today that I think are worthy of note. Uh, if you want to post video, or files, they accept files too, but they're primarily a video site, uh, feel free to watch my coverage of the recent, uh, library, um, uh, SEC kerfuffle, where the SEC is trying to shut down library. You know you can, you can, uh, call the platform alternative, actually alternative, when it's not being shut down by the tech servers that it was on, the big tech servers it was on, but when the U.S. government is actively trying to go after it. Um, and, you know, you can hear basically all the features, how it works. Uh, but what it is, is it's a blockchain-based uh, video primarily storage site. And you can use it to store a variety of things and get paid crypto for views. Uh, it also has a very handy import feature, just like Bitch Oot does, but without being Bitch Oot, who I uh, fairly well tarnished in an article on agoristnexus.com where I went over the fact that they're a big-ass centralization fail with servers based in the absolutely politically correct UK where you can be arrested for making jokes. Um, not a good fucking choice. So, I mean, you can post your videos there if you want. Um, and, you know, I probably will start to do the same things that I do with library, over there because they also have an import feature and I think it sinks but it's terrible it's a really shitty place to be and not a real alternative uh, and and their their comments are discuss it's not open source uh, the only thing you get with with that is basically a centralized hub for some of the worst people you know some of the worst people and also a bunch of people who did get censored and shouldn't have, right? So it's 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 not good. But library is a blockchain-based thing. And library will not only pay the creator for you having watched their video with a verified account, which please do go to jeremiahharding.com slash LBRY to find out more. Um, but they will also pay you uh, to watch this content. You can watch this content and get paid for it, and you can also support the creators just by watching or by also giving them what you earned from watching. It's like the basic attention token, but uh, very specific to video. I like it a lot. It actually is decentralized. You can run a node. Uh, like, it's, it's blockchain-based, so it's sensor-resistant, um, and it's, it's very good for the purposes it's supposed to serve. Um, plus, you can help the library ecosystem in exchange, and in exchange get uh, better video visibility by staking your rewards. So, like, I have about $100 worth of rewards staked right now so that my channel is more visible. Um, and in doing so, uh, I have made my uh, channel... Um, very reasonably okay in terms of popularity. If every one of my subscribers here watched one library video a month, that would be enough to take care of a significant amount of my bills. I'll put it that way. Um, but 
you know, that's not directly like social media. That's an aspect of social media in terms of video. Parlor included video uploads. They didn't include streaming, though. So I figure that uh, a video uploading site is a good one to compare it to, especially one that doesn't rely on big tech servers. Um, it relies on the blockchain to store the basically target of blobs, and it relies on a BitTorrent-like decentralized file sharing system to operate the rest of it. And basically, you get rewards just like the Bitcoin, uh, the the Bit sorry BitTorrent uh, token, which is where you like. Uh, get tokens in exchange for helping decentralize information. Um, or, you know, uh, those files you totally illegally got. So the notion in this regard is that um, library will basically be uncensored as long as the signal of your content is kept alive. And you can automatically download videos when you watch them. So let's say you start watching a video, um, it's going to download in the background and you can watch it uh, at your leisure um, anytime you want uh, offline. So you could download your video, watch it offline, and not have to spend any mobile data. It's very handy in that way and you don't need to pay for YouTube Premium to do it. Um, which is nice, it's a nice little feature there. Um, and, and all of this comes with a relatively lightweight app experience, um, and it will help you help information stay free. When James Corbett was banned from YouTube recently, uh, when his primary channel was suspended, uh, terminated, uh, for actually no violations of YouTube policy, but they didn't like some of the stuff he was saying about the, uh, <coughs> so they kicked him off. They kicked him off. Um, but his videos had all been backed up to library because that's how library works. This video you're watching right now, if you're watching it on YouTube, you could also be watching it on library and helping me and helping you. Uh, just saying. I'm going to wink a lot during this, I think. But the point is that that is an alternative and it is an option, uh, which means that it's, it's, it's better than parlor for video. Now you've got your video covered. That's basically half of the pie with Parler. So what do you do for your social media posts? Well, there's a, a service called PocketNet. I have interviewed the founder of, well, co-founder of PocketNet uh, for my blog, and I think I've also interviewed him in video form. Um, and generally speaking, uh, it's an app where uh, you can earn for referrals just like you can on library, which, by the way, if you do use my library referral link at jeremiahharding.com slash library and you, you verify your email, which lets you interact with the economy, um, then you'll be helping me as well because I get a referral bonus. But uh, PocketNet has a referral thing as well, so you can also go to jeremiahharding.com slash PocketNet, one word, and uh, get on there as well. PocketNet is basically blockchain social media. Uh, you can make posts, like posts, share posts, and in the terms of the likes, what it does is uh, the amount uh, uh, of stars you give the post will determine a random lottery of uh, PocketNet tokens to be distributed. Um, and those PocketNet tokens that are distri well, pocket coins uh, at this point is what they're called, I think. Um, when those are distributed, they're sent to your actual cryptocurrency wallet, which you can send to the exchanges which accept PocketCoin currently. Um, and you can comment, you can share posts, you can uh, post links, and it even has a full, rich text editor blog. You know how I said uh, Parler is a shitty WordPress install? Well, that's because it's a shitty WordPress install. And they basically took the features of WordPress, like... Uh, making posts and they stripped out most of the capabilities and just said that you can make this limited character fucking post uh you can't rich text it, text edit and we have very stupid ways that things embed um and <laughs> in general it's just not very good um so on pocketnet however you have a full rich text editor 
um, and you can write full-on blog posts, articles. You could put a book on PocketNet if you wanted to. So it's a good site. I recommend using it, and they're considering getting video and streaming soon. In fact, I think they're actively working on it, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm saying, you know, I think. Um, but yeah, if you want to get involved in that, those are two alternatives. There are also other blockchain-based sites, like, for instance, content on Steemit and the Steemit-related dApps. Um, so there are more ways to do this, but I push those two pretty hard, and this is a short informal vlog, because I think those two satisfy the basic requirements. And if, uh, if, um, PocketNet does get its, uh, live peer set up, then it will also be your live streaming solution, and you can live stream to PocketNet. You can upload videos at that point to PocketNet. You can do blog posts. You can do pictures. You can do text. Um, and there will also be end-to-end -end encrypted chat coming up here. Like, it's very much better than Parler. And it's not on a centralized server owned by Amazon or anyone else. Because it's a decentralized actual alternative to the centralized social media parasites like Facebook and Twitter. That's it. So it couldn't get more simple than realizing the problem, which is centralization and saying, I'm not going to go with your centralized option anymore, Fed. And keep in mind, I think Bongina like worked for Secret Service or something. This guy is not a freedom advocate. This guy is a Fed. So let's be very clear here. Fuck Parler and fuck anyone pushing it right now. Any one of them. Anyway, uh, this was brought to you by OPSEC Drip. Link is going to be right there. Uh, 240 glorious pixels of Shemog-born libertarian news content that you can watch in bite-sized pieces between anything you do. Uh, feel free to let him know that his money went to a good source by subscribing, and my link is right there that you can do the same thing with. Be well, everyone. Decentralize. Get the fuck away from Parlor and smash the state.